30 or 28. Jenny's Spike 2. This is, this is mind-blowing stuff. Hey, wait, isn't that Lee Strobel? Isn't he a, like, lawyer? What's he doing trying to teach science? One of the most striking discoveries of modern science has been that the laws and the constants of physics, the numbers that govern the universe, unexpectedly conspire in an extraordinary way to make the universe habitable for life. Unexpectedly? What did you expect? Tell us! How do you know that the fine-tuner wanted to tune everything for life, of all things? Why are you so confidently claiming that everything was fine-tuned for our existence. Isn't it a bit arrogant to be so confidently claiming that the universe was fine-tuned for life just because we are here? The universe hasn't been calibrated for life. Life is adapted for the universe. Conspire. 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 I just got an image of uh, numbers sat in a dark room over a piece of paper plotting to bring about the revolution of life. In other words, the universe is finely tuned on a razor's edge in a way that defies mere chance. Defies chance? What? Really? How? We derive our constants from pre-existing entities. Since we live in a universe with the constants the way they are, the probability of them turning out that way is one in one. It's completely pointless to be speculating of what could have been when it's physically impossible to begin with. So pretty much your argument is, if things were different, Things would be different. Mm, convincing. Oh, so it sort of raises edges, it. Let's see what happens when you push it off. Uh, the best analogy I can think of is if you get a, a, a paint bucket and throw it at a wall, the chance that you get that splash pattern there is negligible. But the fact you've done it defies all chance. But you've done it. You see how it works and which points powerfully and is best explained by the existence of a creator. The existence of a creator. Before I get into that, I have to state life adapts to its environment. And if you're going to say this provides evidence for the existence of a creator, hey, this always puzzled me. Why do they only sell for one creator? Why not two creators? Or multiple creators? How do you know who the creator is? Or what is it? How... How did this creator come into be? Where did they come from? Or how did they create it? Did any of these big, big questions, you, they always leave them unanswered. Let me give you just a few examples. I want to start with my favorite one, which is the force of gravity. That's my favorite one as well, because it has no bearing on life. The force of gravity is finely tuned to an incomprehensible degree so that life can exist. If you, if you imagine the universe, and imagine these giant dials, you know, this, you know, like a the old Flash Gordon show. Remember those movies? I'm dating myself, but they were great back in the 60s. All the dials. Now, here you're kind of assuming something. You're, you're assuming that um, everything in, in the universe is separate. All the laws of the universe are separate, and that they're working together. When, in fact, scientists at the moment are working on the grand unified theory. It's not been figured out yet, but it will. String theory hits very close, because it gets three out of the four forces. But the point being is that if you want to use dials, then it's not plural. It's dial. Um, but you got these, you imagine the cosmos has these huge dials. And what I'm saying is, say there's about 30 of these dials or more, they are just absolutely precisely calibrated so that life can exist in an incomprehensible way. Well, with this one dial that I've already established so, um, already, the uh, chance of a number not coming up is impossible. Therefore, a number has to come up. If you spin that and it carries on spinning, it has to stop at a certain point. The chance of it stopping at that certain point is the exact same chance of anywhere else on that dial. That can't be explained by mere chance. And just, so imagine one of these dials is the dial that controls the force of gravity. And what physicists have determined is the force of gravity could have been set over a wide range of possibilities. It didn't have to be where it is. It could have been at anything. In fact, they have calculated that the force of gravity, if you imagine a ruler that stretched across the entire known universe. 
and it's broken down in one inch increments. So you got this ruler stretching billions of light years across the universe. That represents what scientists plausibly believe could have been the range at which gravity could have been set, anywhere along that range. But it happens to be set at just the right place so that life can exist in the universe. Now, what would happen if you took this ruler going all the way across the universe and you saw where gravity was, was set and you moved it by one inch compared to the width of the universe? What would happen? This has got to be one of the dumbest analogies I have heard in a very long time. A 14 billion light year long ruler with one inch increments? Are you kidding me? Notice how he doesn't really mention what number is counted on each increment, which seems like it may be kind of an important thing to note. The gravitational constant is approximately 6 times 10 to the negative 11th power. If each increment is one whole number, then you'll bet your ass that there would be some big differences if it was pushed over one inch. But let's say that each inch represents uh, 10 times 10 to the negative 50th power. Then there wouldn't be the slightest amount of difference if you would move it 1 inch, or 10 inches, or 100 inches. It wouldn't matter. It wouldn't make any difference at all. And even if each increment was like 10 times 10 to the negative 15th power, it's kind of close, but each inch would still make such a small difference, it wouldn't even be noticeable. Catastrophic consequences. Intelligent life would be impossible in the universe. If you adjusted the force of gravity by one inch compared to the width of the entire known universe. That is how finely tuned it is. Is that an accident? Did that just happen by coincidence? No. It's the way it is because it's physics. Okay? We derive our constants from pre-existing entities. Pi is a constant. If you divide the circumference of a circle by the diameter of a circle, you will always get pi. No matter what, pi is a constant. How can there possibly be a universe with pi not equaling 3.14 blah 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 blah? How can that happen? Exactly. It can't. Well, that's just one example, as I said, of you know, maybe as many as 30 or more ways in which these dials are set. Let me just give you another one. It's called the cosmological constant. That's a big word, but we're... Oh, yeah? Try dioxyribonucleic nucleic acids. But what it means is it's the energy density of space. And all you really need to know about the cosmological constant is it's got to be exactly right or the universe falls apart. Uh, no, but yet again, the cosmological constant isn't exactly right. It's an incredibly small but non-zero number. It's a means by Einstein to try and explain why the um, universe isn't contracting under its own gravity. And mind you, this was uh, when he thought the universe was static and at e equilibrium. We know now that it's not at equilibrium. If the cosmological constant were a positive number and a large number, the universe would fly apart. Um, planets could never have coalesced. We'd have no sun. We'd have no stars. If the cosmological constant were a negative number and large, the universe would have just collapsed upon itself. So, if it's not positive, and if it's not negative, then where the hell is it? You can't... You can't a non-positive and a non-negative number would actually be zero. So if you're saying the cosmological constant is zero, then you're saying it doesn't exist. So the cosmological constant has to be exactly right in order for the universe to exist and for life to exist. How precisely does it have to be calibrated? Scientists have now determined that the cosmological constant is finely tuned to one part in a hundred million billion 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 billion. Uh, no, that's just how small it is. Also, in uh, May 2006, it was put forward that a problem by uh, the cosmological constant was indirect evidence of cyclic universes um, put forward by the string theory. In string theory, it's theorized that um, with each cycle of the universe, the cosmological constant subsequently gets gradually smaller, but never reaches a state of zero. That's how precise it is. Now, how do you, how do you understand that number? Picture going on into outer space, and you look back at the Earth, and the Earth's about this big. You're way up in space in a space shuttle or something, the Earth's about that big. How finely tuned is the cosmological constant? The precision is so amazing. It would be as if you took a dart from outer space, and you threw it at the Earth, and it hit the Earth, and it hit a bullseye one trillionth of a trillionth of an inch in diameter. 